All right, um, I took the hair dryer for this and I dried it out pretty good. It's still a little damp, but it looks good. Um, as I said, if, you, if you're going to do a bigger picture like this that you're going to really keep, you'd be good to tape it down to a board or something to keep the paper stretched. Okay? So, most of this is dry. Um, this was our first layering. and um, I think you have to just take a look at your um, reference photo and see where you need some work. Like, I could see this line here. So I'm going to mix up a little more orange. I ran out of orange. And while we were off camera, while I was waiting for that to dry, I did put some other little colors in here. And I will let you know what they are as I mix them. This is permanent red and permanent yellow light. Again, to make our orangey pumpkin color. Just a basic orange. And as you can see, I'm only using a bit of each of the dots. And if I want a darker orange, I'm going to mix a little bit more darker color on this side. And I'll leave a little more yellow on this side of the palette. So if I want a lighter tint of that same color, you could see it goes from dark to light. I think that's one of the fun things about watercolors. It's so easy to mix. I know people are afraid to mix, but um, once you get over that hump, that fear, it's really kind of fun. I want to work on this area here. You can still see my line, and it looks kind of meh. This is why you don't want to have um, real strong transfer lines. Now you can see this strong, this color is a little darker than what I was using before. But that's okay, because we're going to need it darker. And I'm just going to kind of coax it over that area. Now if I went to this side, it would muddy it up a little. So I'm just going to do a little on the tip of the brush, just to try to cover in over that line. And I'm not going to worry right now about blending it very much because I, I more or less want a, a deeper color. I'll probably put a brown in there later. I think that's going to throw my design off a little bit. I don't like the way that line is, but we'll see how we can make it work. That's why this is kind of like a... Um, by the seat of my pants type of thing for you guys. Not quite the blind leading the blind. But you know I'm I learn too as I paint, as we all do. Now see I, I draw a line in with the tip of my brush and then I'm gonna take the clean water and pull it out. Let it follow that water. And I need a little more here, I see. This is our darker side of the pumpkin. So we want a little bit of a stronger shade to it. And I've been looking at my reference photo as I'm going along. And, you know, that's what you do. You just look at the photo and kind of see where the colors are that you want. Everything doesn't have to be exact. And that's what's nice about the watercolor process, too, is it's a looser, looser feel to it. I'm going to also fill in another layer of color here. All these little dark areas. Around the stem. Um, I'm going to rinse my brush in my big water. 
I'll call my rinsing water my big water. And now see how thick that line was and just by working the water into it. Now I'm not, not going to go right up to the line or it'll bleed over. So I'm just kind of doing the middle of the sections right now to soften them. And I'm going to put a little more color on this side too. Same thing. I'm kind of painting in a deeper line. And then I'm taking clean water. And I'm going to let it spread. And if you want to put a little more color in, just add a little more color at a time. And you can refine your shapes this way. You can move these lines to a point. This looks stark right here because we didn't go, I don't think last time we went on this side of the line. So we don't want a strong color, but you don't want to leave it that base of yellow either. Okay. So same thing here. Okay, it's starting to look good. Um, I think what I'm going to do next is start working on the stem a little bit. And I'm going to rinse my brush and pick up a little. This is Hooker's Green. It's a pretty strong green, as you can see. And I'm going to rinse my brush in the big water. And I'm going to pick up a little Van Dyke Brown. Van Dyke is a darker brown. And I'm just going to put it in the corner and kind of work a little over. And what it's going to do, it's going to soften that brightness of the hooker's green. It's going to tone it. See how it turned it a little bit more realistic to like a grayer green. It's a much nicer color. And after I'm done brush mixing, I usually rinse my brush because I don't want that huge amount of paint on it. I'm going to start laying in the base of my stem. The stem is green on this pumpkin. For now, I'm just going to wash a very light layer of green. Now, if I want to pick out a little color while it's wet, you could just go over it with a clean brush and kind of blot, or you could take a Q-tip and you could blot out color. And what that does is it tones the paper a little bit, but there's very, very little color in it. So it's going to leave it as a highlight. And now on the reference photo, my picture's not really clear, but this side is darker because the shade is there. So I'm going to mix more of the brown with a touch of the green to make a darker color. Add some clean water. And look at that nice rich, rich green that I get now. It's very pretty. And I'm gonna rinse my brush clean water and keep it damp and pick up some of the brown and the green that's Van Dyke brown with hookers green I'm gonna start at this side because that's the darkest area I put my line in and a shade under the stem just 
See how I'm using the tip of the brush? Just to nudge the water around. And since this is our shaded area here, I'm going to come from this side and really make that more filled in and dark. And I'm kind of just going to dance the brush so it's got a little texture. And I'm going to rinse the brush. I rinse probably more than I have to. And I'm going to pick up a little lighter green. So I'm, I'm taking more from this side or adding a little more of the hookers in there. And I'm just dragging a little bit of the brown in. So it'll be that brown tone, but it'll be a lighter version of it. And I'm going to just dance the brush to give it some texture here. Okay, see how nice it looks? See how easy it is to get several shades of a color with only using two colors. It's very easy to tone it down and... Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is start to deepen the undertones, the backs, because we want to we want to skip around we're going to let the stem dry a little bit so what i'm going to do is take the brown the van dyke brown and kind of mix it in into my orange a bit So what it'll do is it lightens the brown a bit, but it's still it's still gonna be a nice shade. And it's gonna have that orange cast to it. It's still gonna go in that family. So I rinse my brush and I'm gonna pick up orange with a little bit of the brown on it. See how you got the different colors of brown. And there's no one right way to do this. If it's too red, put a little more yellow in it. If it's too brown, use the other colors. Now, since the light's coming from here, this will be the darkest part. So we want to start there to test the water and test our color. That's perfect, see? A nice sheer. And as in our toll painting, we want to make our triangles where our shades are. We want to keep the shadow thinner on this end of this side of the segment. And we'll go thicker on the other where the shadow is cast. So we're going to start defining the shape a little more on the bottom. And again, this doesn't have to go all at once. You don't want your lines perfectly straight because in nature they're not. You could add water to your paint if you need to. If it gets dark, see how that's a little dark? Just rinse, wet your brush, and move it. You can thin it out. You can make a thin line. You could blot. You could blot with a Q-tip if you want. Make sure your Q-tip's clean. I see green on that. Though I think I'm going to tone with some green. And you could really get rid of a lot of errors. 
You don't want to dwell on an area because what you're going to do by doing that is pull up your color. So try not to stay in a certain area too long. And don't keep working over and over. Like, see, I don't like that bump. So I'm just going to even it out. Doesn't have to be perfect, but... I'm going to do the bottom first. Like I said, there, re there really isn't a pattern. I might just call this a video lesson and put the line work in for you. I'm going to move some of this up the side of the pumpkin. And you can see I'm bending a little again my paper. And see, you're erasing that line and just moving the paint. See the orange is sticking out there a little bit? There it goes. Just erase it. The more irregular, the more natural it's really going to look. Now I can see this is really wet, so I don't want to keep messing there. I'll go back later and adjust. See how it's starting to take shape. Little by little, you go through each section. And we're going to get thinner at the top because there's more light up at the top. And we'll put more brown at the bottom. Because that's where the shadow is going to hit. See, that's a pretty um, profound line that I don't like. So I'm just going to erase it with the water and blend it in. Okay? I'm going to let this dry one more time. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably do a little more here, just lightly, while we're off camera. Because, I, I mean, this could get long with me playing with it, but... Um, I think that's, it'll, you get the point. So I'll be back. I won't do too much more, just more of the same. I'm going to shade a little bit more on that side, okay? And then I'll be back. 